how we can use a JavaScript library for scanning barcodes and interact with our Rails application. And to do this, we're going to use the Quagga JS library. And during my research for this episode, I did come across several different JavaScript libraries that could handle barcode reading. However, I chose this one because it is maintained, it's been around for a while, and it does appear to be fairly popular. Not to say that the other ones that I researched were bad, but I didn't see anything that they could provide that this one did not. So this is an MIT license based product, so you are free to use it within any of your applications. So to get started, we'll go to the disk folder on the GitHub repository, and then we'll download the Quagga.js file. And we'll place this into our vendor's JavaScripts folder of our Rails application. And then within our application.js file, we'll just add the require Quagga. And you'll want to put this into its own JavaScript file. However, for simplicity, I'll add the necessary code that we need here. So first, we're going to add a listener on TurboLink's load. We'll load this load quagga function. And so we do need to create this function. So the basic shell of this function will look something like this. And then we want to check if our barcode scanner is present. And if the user has access to the navigator media devices, and specifically the get user media. And this is a WebRTC function, and not all browsers support this. So if you're using an iOS device, then you may need to go another route with having a file selection or build a native application. However, today we're going to assume that your user has an Android device and is using something like Google Chrome or another device that's supported with the Get User Media. We can then call Quagga init, and this will take in two hashes. The first hash will be the initializer settings, and then the second hash will be the callback of that initializer settings. All right, so for our initializer settings, I'll paste some stuff in here. And to explain this, the first is setting the input stream. So we need to reference a diff tag, so our target, we're calling this ID barcode scanner, and the live stream type means that we are going to use the WebRTC get user media function, and Quagga is going to automatically add in a video element into our barcode scanner div. The number of workers is by default set to four. However, you're able to use Navigator hardware concurrency to get the number of operating cores on the machine or device that you're testing with. And in this case, this computer has eight, so this would just return an integer eight. However, for a mobile device, it may return two or four. And this is just gonna be the number of processors or workers available to Quagga for processing the images. And then we can pass another hash for our decoder readers. And this is gonna be the different type of barcodes that you want to support for your application. And there is a large variety of different code scanners. And I found the UPC reader to work very well, as well as the code 128, which is by default in the EAN reader. And after Quagga has been initialized, we can then call the callback. We'll pass in a function here, and we want to catch an if error, then we want to log the error and then return. Otherwise, if it did initialize successfully, then we'll start. A few reasons why it may not initialize is if the device that you're using or the browser that you're using does not support the get user media. In that case, it's not going to run the section of code, but you do want to have some kind of catch there. And then on the page that you want to display the barcode, you just need to add a div tag with an ID of barcode scanner. And again, this is referenced into our application JavaScript when the Quagga is initialized. And if you visit the page, you should now see the video. And now we need to create a listener so Quagga will know whenever it's presented a barcode, it'll create a callback and a post to our application. So to do that, under the Quagga init, we can create a listener called onDetected. And this will pass a function result, and we can set a variable to the code that's returned. So now we have this last code, it's equal to the result dot code result dot code. Once we have a barcode, we can then stop Quagga, so it'll no longer show the video. We can then create a Ajax post to our application. So we'll create a post, and we'll send this to products, and then get barcode. And we'll pass in the data, We'll create a UPC parameter, and we'll pass in the last code. So during my initial testing, there was a lot of discovery to be done on the accuracy 
of JavaScript barcode scanners. And I found that the barcode has an 87% accuracy of being detected correctly. However, there is a case where it's going to scan it incorrectly. And that's mainly because you have this fuzzy picture, or in my case, a cheap web camera. So it's not going to really be that great of an image. However, we are able to change this on detect a bit so that it's going to be able to more accurately scan our barcodes. And from what I found, Quokka will scan at 100 millisecond increments. So every second, it can capture 10 images. So instead, what if we capture 20 images? So we'll set this variable last result to an empty array. And then when it detects an image, we'll push to the last result the last code. So this will add the last code into our last results array. We can then check if the last result length is greater than 20. If it is greater than 20, then we can execute this code below. However, we do need to capture all of the codes and then find which one occurs most common. And with the 87% likelihood of being correct, then we can call the order by occurrence. And this is just a custom function that we'll have to write. So we're setting this code equals to the order by occurrence and then the last result and then we're grabbing the first item. So we then need to make this code passed into our data on the Ajax post. So I won't get into it too much here. However, if we go up to the top before we call our load quagga function, we can just paste in this function. And this function is called order by occurrence and it takes an array. And basically this is just going to return a array sorted by the most commonly one found first. So in our case, it's most likely going to be our barcode. And during my test, I found that this has been pretty much foolproof at 20. However, you may want to reduce this down to 10. So it would essentially take one second to find a barcode, or you could even lower it a bit more. It should still be accurate, but I found that 20 was like a almost guaranteed accuracy. And I also found some issues with Turbolinks, where if we reload the page multiple times, then this Quagga on detected would be fired multiple times. So in order to fix this, we can create a switch. We'll just call this Quagga.initialize equals to true. And keep in mind that this is something that I'm just creating. It doesn't actually exist within the library. So then we can wrap our on detected with this if Quagga.initialize is undefined. So what this will do is it'll call this one time. And if it does call it, then we're going to initialize this on detected. Otherwise, then we'll just leave it blank. And we do need to move this above the initializer of the Quagga. So I'll cut it and then I'll come up here and I'll paste it in. So now if Quagga has already been initialized, then we'll load this on detected. Otherwise, Quagga can initialize again, and this undetected listener will not be called multiple times. And it does work with calling this prior to initializing Quagga, and I've not had any issues with it. So now we can check to see if we can get a post to our products get barcode, passing in the barcode that we found. In our routes.rb file, we'll need to create the post call for the get barcode. So on our resources products, we can call dude to pass in a block where we then have post, get barcode, and then pass on collection. So if we run our rake routes, we'll get something like this. And you'll see that this post path now, we have this products and then get barcode. So in our products controller, we can create an action called get barcode. And then we can create a instance variable product. And we can set this to product.findBy, pass in the UPC, and then the parameters UPC that we got from our Ajax post. So in our scenario, I want to find a product with this UPC barcode. And if the product is found, then I want to redirect to the show page of that product. If it's not found, then I want to automatically create a new product. So to do this, we can find the product with find or initialize by, and then pass in the UPC and the parameter UPC that we got from the Ajax post. We can then create some logic here like this where, where unless a product is a new record, then we'll redirect to the add product and this will take us to the show page. Otherwise, we can redirect to the new product path and then we can pass in the parameter UPC and then again just pass in the one that we got from our Ajax post. So up into the new action, if the parameter is set, 
then it's going to populate the value of the UPC that we have in our model. Otherwise, it's just going to be blank. So if we reload our page, you'll see that I have this Otterbox commuter case and I'll scan the barcode. It found the barcode and then it automatically took me to the Otterbox commuter show page of this product. And so let's test another product. So here I have this Google Chromecast and if we scan this barcode, and keep in mind that my web camera is kind of crappy, so it doesn't autofocus very well. Sometimes I have to take it up close and then bring it back for it to get the autofocus. It takes us right to the Google Chromecast show page. So now let's test something where we don't actually have a barcode for. So I'll go back to the home page and I'll scan some tennis balls. And this is a neat one because it is a circular product, but you'll see that it scanned it and then it took us right to the new product path. And you'll see that it automatically filled in our UPC code. So then we can give this a name tennis balls and we can pass in an image if we want and then create the product. So if we go back to our homepage and scan our tennis balls again, it takes us right to our tennis balls. And if you are using something like Bootstrap, and if you want to make it responsive, then you can add something like barcode video and barcode canvas, set the width to 100% and the height to auto. And you should also add the barcode scanner, the canvas drawing buffer, and the video drawing buffer to display none, just to hide it. And that's just going to clean up the view a bit. So now if we enable our device toolbar, you can then see that it automatically resizes in response to different versions. And the barcode scanning works all the same. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.